This is our community so far. We have Rick, Beta, Michonne, Alpha, and Daryl. You could say this is a proper ragtag team of degenerates. With the exception of my boy Daryl, of course. Our base is currently set up and more and more distributed in the beautiful Cascade Hills. And as you can see from the purple around us, we currently have a curveball active. And I certainly don't mean the ever so annoying radio silence. You see, the zombies around my base have a hyper auditory mutation. And that's almost certainly the reason for Dwight's demise previously. But for now, Beta just wants to get the hell out of the area. And he's He's also bringing his mate Alpha along for the ride. Because you see, simply put, these two despicable bastards are up to no good. But first they've decided to sort out the radio tower that's causing the radio silence. You see, they've got to remain covert and blend in with their dictatorship. I really hope Alpha doesn't get immediately annihilated. Oh god! Well, I'm sure we can all agree that certainly could have gone better. She should have stuck on some bloody scent block. What a moron. Beta does what he does best and clears the area of the undead. But then I make the mistake of forgetting how the whole radio silence curveball works. There's no point climbing that tower, but you ain't gonna make the area safe that way. Can I not secure it because it's in blood plague territory? Oh, shit. So it looks like we're gonna be taking on a certain player card. But I do have scent block because, you know, obviously Alpha and Beta, they move amongst the zombies. That was the idea. And then Alpha just got immediately fucking annihilated. What a stupid woman. So Beta raids the corpse of his former ally. Then after a quick repositioning of the car, Beta then covers himself in some walker guts. And now with Beta invisible to the walker's scent, I go in to batter some meat. Let's go, we're scent blocking it. The first phase goes off pretty quickly thanks to Beta's heavy weapon. And then I do what I do best by dropping back and setting everything on fire. That very successfully cleared the room of the undead. Not that I needed the room clear of course because, you know, scent block. The second phase always comes quicker as kind of like a virgin's first visit to a strip club. Although I try re-entering the cloud too early and well, yeah. Toxic fumes isn't exactly good for your health. So I once again set everything on fire, but I feel the walkers are starting to suspect there's a mole within their ranks. Seriously, like these bastards are following me around like a lost puppy. I'm just grateful there's no actual puppies in this mod. Then rather surprisingly disaster strikes. Oh my god, the car's gone! What have you done? Oh I ass away, but blame everyone else but yourself, is it? Aye, nothing to do with the mollies you dropped earlier, is it bad? Just gotta add find a toolkit to the list of problems we now gotta solve. But hey, at least I can take down this play card. But what makes things worse is this cell tower is still in plague territory. Oh, for Christ's sake. How many am I going to have to kill? Well, that is an issue, isn't it? How clutch would it be, though, right now? Right, if I got a toolkit in this play card. Unfortunately, my luck doesn't work that way. Well, let's go see if uh, this lovely enclave by here has any uh, has any toolkits for sale. And for once, it seems my luck is starting to turn. <gasps> They've got a toolkit. They are geniuses. Thank you very much. I make sure to pay them back like any good neighbor would by using my shock and during a massive fucking dinner bell. <laughs> I couldn't be beta, could I, without bloody attracting all the zombies? What the bloody hell is a zombie, but I'm pretty sure you mean a goddamn walker. Anyway, I fix up the car, then go check out to see how the enclave is handling the problem I caused them. And it turns out they're actually doing all right. Significantly better than Alpha did earlier, at least. All three of them are still knocking about strong, so I decide to test out their resilience with a fragmentation grenade. But unfortunately, it seems the walkers in this area are simply not bothered in the slightest. Well, it's time to bloody rectify that. Thankfully, there's a level 3 infestation nearby, and I intend to weaponize the absolute shit out of it. And thankfully, the scent block is starting to wear off. Otherwise, this plan would be utterly useless. I jump back out of the window to make a little bit of noise, and the walkers start getting attracted to my location. The scent block then wears off, which almost causes a feeding frenzy. Here we go. Oh, God. No, no, no. Jesus. Oh, my God. No idea what the bloody hell that jump was. But thankfully, we're still alive, so let's get out of here. Go on, this way, please. Infestation cleared. There we go. And we got 28 influence for that. And I'm going to weaponize all of that influence to make you like the video and subscribe. I really hope you're all enjoying this series. If you'd like to see a part four, I'll need 600 likes, please. Thank you very much. Not only have I dragged a level three infestation with me, but I've also caught the attention of a nearby horde. You can probably figure out what we're going to do with this horde. I make a lot more noise than go and hide at the back of the remnants' shed. But regrettably, they seem to be doing a much better job of handling the situation in comparison to Alpha. I'd say Alpha wasn't as Alpha as she thirst fought. The three remnants head outside to deal with the problem I've caused, so I close the door to keep myself nice and safe inside. Peace and peace and quiet, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, no, no! All of that excessive screaming means the remnants have gone from three to two. All right, scratch that, make that one. And with there being two massive hordes outside those doors, it's not too long before, ironically, there's nothing left of the remnants. Now I need to stop dicking about and get that cell tower cleared. Unfortunately, though, it's still threatened by two player cards. Well, you know what they say, you can't make an omelette without breaking some eggs. Oh my god, Jesus! <laughs> 
I get back to my car with a hold quite literally hot on my tail. Yes, that is a burning zombie joke. What can I say? My comedic genius knows no bounds. But now Beta can make his way to the next player cart. I find it at this little house and once again park strategically. I'm sure you'll agree it worked out so well last time. Now it's time for Beta to get to work. He pops a stim and a second scent block, which leaves him very close to permanent infection. And remember, there's no cure in this mod, which means I'm gonna have to be extra careful with my play cart phasing. The last thing I wanna do is accidentally gas myself leaving Beta on the dead heap with Alpha, Dwight, Glenn, Rosita and Abraham. Holy shit, this mod is fucking brutal. And I didn't even include Sasha or Eugene in those statistics. The second phase goes down pretty simply and to be honest, so does the third. You gotta love scent block, am I right? I can then do a quick little tidy up so I don't get surprised bit. I then do a little bit of looted, but there's no time to be resting on our laurels, especially when we have a scent block active. We've gotta get cracking if we really wanna make the most of it. The next play cart is located in this medical center and there's no way to cheese this one. Assuming you don't already count scent block as cheesing, I enter what I'm now realizing is the veterinary clinic. And thankfully there's only a couple of walkers about, but with the scent block still active, I'm left perfectly alone to get the first phase off with my heavy weapon. I then wait for the gases to dissipate and go back in and get the second phase finished. And at this point, quite a sizable crowd has gathered. Well, it's a bloody good thing I stink like the dead. Look at them, they're so confused, don't have a fucking clue what's going on. Thankfully, the stink sticks around for a little bit longer and I'm able to take out the play cart. I obviously have time to do a cheeky bit of looting, then it's finally time to fix that pissing cell tower, which it turns out is incredibly easy to do. It turns out all I've got to do is walk vaguely near it. Secured, and radio silence has been completed. Now I need all of these zombies to piss off, please. Thank you very much. I then decide to try my luck for a toolkit by searching this warehouse. But what can I say? I'm not a lucky boy. So instead, I set my sights on setting a nearby petrol station as an outpost. There's just one problem. There's a metric ton of fuckheads between me and it. But thanks to my extreme tactical intellect, I can attract them all over to me with my rifle shots. I can then do a little bit of backtracking like a cancelled comedian. Yes, they're surrounding the car, but that's fine. I've got plans for that. And put in plenty of obstacles between me and the horse means I'm relatively safe. That is until I spot a second horde, of course. But they too are also easily confused thanks to Beta being a speedy boy. I can then rather covertly get into the petrol station and claim it as an outpost. And from there, you can probably figure out exactly what I did next. You gotta love an incendiary minefield. <laughs> Alright, yes, I can't wrap my Welsh tongue around the phrase incinerary. If anyone makes fun of my accent in the comment section, I'll become your new stepdad. Sorry, that's basically a convoluted way of saying I'm gonna smash the absolute shit out of your mothers. Also, how sick are my reversing skills? That wasn't the smartest idea. The car's smoking heavier than a pregnant teenager from Newport. But at least I get to listen to the soothing ASMR calming tones of walkers being detonated by my minefield. I can then sort out my inventory for five before swapping to Daryl. And a landmine protected outpost is the perfect mini base to branch out from on a looting quest. And that includes looting the shed and Daryl's pretty certain there used to be an enclave here. Weird, right? I guess they must have moved out of town or something. But then Daryl starts to get a bit cocky by taunting zombies over to his minefield. It starts with me accidentally selecting the wrong emote and Daryl just stands there crying. No, 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 no! Jesus! God damn, that was a lot closer than I care to admit. And the last thing we want to do is lose a fan favourite, am I right? I shit my pants, I thought that was Daryl dead. And after that close call, it's time to move on to a different quest, as Daryl wants to finally reunite with his brother Merle. So he rocks up to the colony of survivors where Merle is living at, but unfortunately Merle still refuses to be recruited. Why won't you allow me to recruit you, you moron? Why won't you join your brother? So instead, Daryl decides to pay a visit to a local trader. And I'll be honest, I'm proper desperate for a toolkit, but unfortunately this trader is Alexis Carter from the network, and she's about as useful as a bloody chocolate teapot. Why could you not have a toolkit on you? Daryl takes this as well as could be expected. Hey, check me out! And with the hordes closing in on Miss Carter, it's time to get the hell out of Dodge. Still looking for something that can repair this beast. And before people comment telling me why don't I bloody make them, unfortunately none of the Walking Dead characters I can recruit can learn the mechanic skill. So instead I head to this power station, but unfortunately all I find is scraps of circuitry. Speaking of scraps, Daryl gets into one, but there's there's not much Daryl can't deal with, especially when he has a repeating crossbow. Has Daryl ever missed a crossbow bolt? I don't think he has. Next up, we're gonna search the water utility place just up the road. Unfortunately though, the pickup takes an extra smidge of damage on my escape, and well, at least Daryl can get his fire starter's badge. Little fire, little fire's fine, I think. In hindsight, I probably should have walked. I would have saved some petrol, got a good bit of exercise, and well, my car quite literally wouldn't be on its last legs. But gratefully, I'm finally able to find a toolkit. Yes, we got a 
took it. Fine, yes. The only problem I have now is walkers storming my location. As you can see, there's quite a few of the bastards right where I don't want them. The only resemblance of a plan I have is to lure them away from the car and to avoid attracting any other large gatherings to my vicinity. Rather surprisingly, the plan works out all right. The car gets repaired, although unfortunately still smoking, but at least clear smoke is better than certain death. After that, Daryl heads back to base, but it's just a pit stop to unload and refuel. Then Daryl heads out on a little quest to make the neighborhood a bit safer, armed with his repeating crossbow, but mainly three Molotovs. As the kids would say, this shit is about to get lit as fuck. Firstly, I use my crossbow to lure them all into one location, although that didn't really work, and if anything, has split the horde into two. Ah, oh, well, you know what they say, in for a penny, time to burn the faces of the undead. But it's fair to say that Molly Throw certainly wasn't my best. And now Daryl's gotta fight off an entire horde that is aware of his location. Thankfully, I was still packing another two mollies. I really don't want them attacking my home. No, in my luck, someone like Rick will die. And I don't want Rick dying. Kind of important to the story we got going on. Daryl being the beast he is, he can fight off the hordes. Although it still annoys me that Daryl Dixon doesn't have bloody gunslinger. In the end, I go back to the sneaky approach seen as these walkers have a worse attention span than an ADHD kid with a clicker pen. My new plan is to refuel this abandoned pickup and then to lead the hordes away. And rather surprisingly, this actually works out all right. Oh, no, 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 no. All right, yes, it almost ends in disaster. But almost isn't a defining trait. Nobody remembers the kid from school who almost shit his pants. Luring the hordes away was actually massively successful. Unlike the time I ate a whole pack of sugar-free mints in year eight, but enough of rectum failure, I'm forced north with walkers hot on my tail. Which isn't exactly a bad thing, as there's an enclave up here that needs welcoming. Excellent reflexes, my friend. It turns out these guys have been on the run for weeks and are currently starving. No idea why the lazy pricks couldn't check the bar not even a stone's throw away from them. But yeah, sure, I guess I'll help you out, but... Although it seems my loud engine may have attracted some nearby walkers. And I don't mean the kind Gary Lineker shags. The crowds force me through the back door like it's that time of the month, and it seems I've been here before. The barn, that is, not a stranger's anal cavity. With the population swelling the longer I linger, I decide it's probably best to retreat. At the end of the day, I've got a ton of food back at base, I'll just grab a rucksack from there. Although it seems I've forgotten about the horde I led away from base earlier, as I'm now leading the bastards back towards base. And it certainly doesn't help my community members don't mind whipping out an automatic rifle. No, 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 beta, no, beta, don't go, don't do it. Unable to handle this with 10 crossbow bolts, I retreat to the supply locker to pick up something a bit heavier. God, no, this could get messy. But in my panic state, the only thing I managed to pick up was a fuel bomb. And typically that means everybody's got to get their eyebrows singed. And that turns out to be particularly bad for one of our members. Rick is now frustrated due to low morale. Rick, this is your community. Imagine your leader being frustrated because of his own leadership skills. That is unfortunately when it happens. Beta is fighting off the horde when the final walker lunges for his throat. No! No! Oh my god, I just saved Beta. I just saved Beta. Well, who had Daryl saving Beta on their walking dead bingo card? I certainly bloody didn't. And with that whole dealt with, I'm starting to see this community has the strength and the numbers to make the apocalypse our bitch. But the only way we beat the undead is together. So Daryl pulls out a rucksack of food from our storage. Then he drives back north to the exhausted survivors, ignoring the optional quest to talk to Alpha about it. Apparently, Daryl left his Ouija board at home. He can then give the strangers a sack of food, then check out if they have anything to trade. Apparently not. But hey, at least it's double ply. After that, we are back to base to give Daryl a rest. But before he gets a chance to rest, another wandering horde threatens our safety. But Daryl learned his mistake from earlier. With a molly thrown perfectly into the center of the horde, they all charge towards him. But with them already burning, it's too little too late. That worked actually amazingly. Daryl can then finally rest and we take over as Rick. And as the sheriff, Rick wants to gain allies to assist us in fighting the blood plague. Beta, on the other hand, disagrees. But what the fuck does that prick know? He's Things like the dead and where's the face of a zombie for fuck's sake. Rick knows we need to help people. So Rick heads to the home of the determined but comes across a large horde just meters away from their home. I, I'm not doing going to be doing a very good job of winning allies here when I lead a massive horde to these people. So I park around the corner to hopefully keep them safe. I then make up the remaining distance on foot to talk to Dryad. Hey, will you stop running away you prick? Honest to God. Dryad needs a hand taking down a local infestation and unfortunately insists on coming along for the ride. So with her chilling in the back of the pickup we make our way over to the infestation, but you can probably figure out how this one's gonna end. Oh. Wait, ah, oh, it crashed! Not an ideal situation to be in, but at least the game spawned me on top of the car. And apparently the determined no longer need our help. This time I've gotta help out a group that go by the locals. And oh my god, what a fucking shit name for an enclave. It's the apocalypse for fuck's sake, eat as much calories as you want like. So I arrive at the home of the Weight Watching pricks, and head inside to introduce myself. Uh... Oh my god. Oh my- No! No! Rick! 
No, Rick! My silence is more than I ever could. My leader, our protagonist, and our hope for this entire run reanimates on the floor of strangers. Can I get an RIP for Ricky Dicky Doodah Grimes in the comment section? Better dead than Zed, I suppose. I mean, that's not filling me with joy, Beta, but yeah, nice nice one, mate. Oh, that's the card. Actually, Rick was bit. He reanimated in front of my very eyes. Beta is properly thick as shit, but he is a highly effective use of muscle. So I take over as him and head off to destroy the remaining player cards. Unfortunately, though, we don't get particularly far, as some idiot forgot to refuel. But at least he managed to pull over to the side of the road to allow traffic to pass. Oh my god, I didn't even put any heatables onto him. What is going on with me? Panicked and disorganized after the untimely loss of our leader, Beta searches a nearby house for fuel, but unsurprisingly people didn't use to keep diesel fuel in their kitchen cupboards. Seeing as he's near the home of the determined, he pops in to see if they have any fuel. They don't, but I will take that toolkit, thank you very much. I also find an ambulance nearby and you might have guessed I'm starting to get desperate. This being lethal zone, it's obviously out of fuel, and just like I suspected, the only thing in the back was things I could use to save my life. Now the plan is simple. Get 600 meters over a river, around a mountain, and to Rick's dead body. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Also, I've got no stamina items because I'm a moron. Can Beta make the death defying trip? Can he avoid hundreds of walkers along the way without a single energy drink to quench his first? This could be Beta's biggest challenge yet, or barely an inconvenience which he does in record time. After unloading the heavier items in the back of Rick's pickup, Beta enters the home of the locals to pay respects to his leader. Oh, hey. Come on in if you want. Oh, thanks, mate. You're very jolly considering you have, like, one of my community members just laid out on your kitchen floor, like, you know? Not even mentioning his own mate just lying inches away. To be honest, I'm just happy he didn't go through Rick's pockets and help himself to any of the valuable shit he had on him. After Beta has paid his respects and flogged all of the dead guy shit back to the Enclave, now it's time to crack on with the play cards and always make sure to park strategically. It has literally never gone wrong. Beta pops an energy drink and then headbutts his way through a glass window. The play cart is located in this store cupboard and it's time to start battering it with his heavy axe. Although he can't quite get the phase before the hordes catch up to him. But by dodging his way through the crowds, he can stun the walkers. This is very risky playing uh, this mod. And you know what? Sometimes all you gotta do is just set literally everything on fire. That molly does a fantastic job of clearing the crowd. Then Beta can go in and finally get the first phase off. Obviously dropping a second molly on his retreat. And from here, Beta finishes off the heart from the roof of the pickup. The next play cart is literally just across the road. So I decide to make the journey on foot. Like I've said previously, Master Tap. Tactician, am I right? And by closing the door behind me, I managed to get the first phase off before the hordes catch up to me. I then escape through the back and toss a molly behind me. Then for some reason, I spot a ladder and have to climb it. It's just kind of what I do. Well, look at that. And now, uh, Beta could just sit up here for the rest of eternity. Never worrying. Ever again. Okay, well, technically that's a lie, but at least there's a second ladder I can climb down. I slam my way into the ice cream shop like a bull in a china shop to make as much noise as possible to hopefully draw the crowds out from the play cart. But to be honest, it seems like I didn't need to. And with the be next to no foot traffic, I can easily get the second phase off, and then move to the other side of the shop where I get the killer blow. And just like that, Beta is starting to solidify himself as potentially the next leader of the Rectatorship. But it's best not to rest on our laurels. The sun has risen and a new day is upon us. It's time for Beta to end the blood plague. There might still be several hearts left, but nothing can stop us now. Our boy Beta is flying high. We start like we always do by battering the heart with a heavy weapon. That is until the hordes catch up to us. No, 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 no. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. I didn't think this one through. My problem really is I'm completely out of stamina, and all I've got is a pack of fridge raiders to keep me going. They are slower, they are duller. I can't outsmart them. No, I can't. What am I on about? I can't outsmart anything. I then climb onto the car and pop a couple of shots with the rifle, and that allows my stamina to regenerate. I successfully get the first phase off with my single shot rifle, and then it's time to get right back into the heavy action. I hit it a few more times until it phases, and drop a soda can bomb. I can then limp my way out of the open window, again with no stamina. And seeing as the crowd in the warehouse are getting a bit out of control, I go for a little runabout to try and lure them all outside. But I unfortunately get distracted talking to the mod creator in my livestream chat. Uh, I've tried getting rid of these runners, but I've been proving difficult to get rid of. Ah, fair enough. Oh, no! No! Another life taken too soon due to my lapse in concentration. Can I get an RIP for Beta in the comment section? Well, that's rough. And we're back to the press chat 